Hello, welcome to Related Rates. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas, El Paso, and a, an assistant professor at Doniana Community College. This lecture is for Math 1411 Calculus at UTEP. Chapter, th chapter 2 still, differentiation. Section 2.6, Related Rates, comes to us from Larson's 11th edition of Calculus. Here we go. A special note, uh, related rates, there is a companion video on my YouTube channel, and it's cleverly titled, Related Rates Examples. This particular video takes you through several homework problems from WebAssign, and WebAssign is directly uh, associated with Larson's calculus. It's through Cengage, the publisher. Uh, great problems from WebAssign, as well as some tips and tricks not necessarily presented here in this lecture video. So some guidelines for solving related rates problems. First of all, identify all given quantities and quantities to be determined. Know what it is that you're talking about. If it's helpful, make a sketch and label the quantities. When you're drawing a rectangle or building a garden or drawing or building a fence, maybe it's helpful. But not every situation is going to be a, a sketch will make it more helpful. So write an equation involving the variables whose rates of change either are given or are to be determined. Then we'll use the chain rule to implicitly differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to time t. And after completing step three, we're gonna substitute into the resulting equation all known values for the variables and their rates of change. Then we can solve for the required rate of change. All right, so in our first example, we're gonna find the rate of change of the distance between the origin and a moving point on the graph of y equals x squared plus one, if dx dt equals two centimeters per second. So maybe I would wanna draw this graph, probably not though, let's see what would happen here. There's my graph y equals x squared plus one, and the distance between the origin and some point moving, let's make that a smaller line there. Well, I'm looking for this distance. Pretty bad graph, but we're gonna go with it. So find the rate of change. It tells us uh, that we're looking for, uh, find the rate of change of the distance. It tells us to find dd dt, so the derivative of distance with respect to time. We know that the origin is the point zero, zero, and a random point on the graph is the point x, y, given by x comma x squared plus one. Distance formula. Distance formula is x2, uh, the square root of x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. If you want to know where the distance formula comes from, there's a pre-calculus video probably called rectangular coordinates. And it'll show you how the distance formula is developed based off of the Pythagorean theorem. Now that we have our distance formula, we're going to substitute our values. Let me hit the right key here. Uh, we know that uh, x value of the generic point is x. x value of the origin is 0. Uh, the y value of the generic point is x squared plus 1. The y value of the origin is 0. I'm going to subtract 0, my favorite thing to do when I'm subtracting. x squared plus x squared plus 1 all squared underneath the radical. So when I take the derivative, and I'm going to take the derivative here of the square root of this mess. So it's going to be 1 half. Leave the inside alone. I'm using the chain rule here. The x squared plus quantity x squared plus 1 all squared stays the same. To the negative 1 half. Now I'll multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of the inside is derivative of x squared is 2x. But remember dx dt because x is changing with time also. Plus. The derivative of x squared plus 1 all squared is 2 times x squared plus 1. Leave the inside alone. Derivative of the inside, 2x, again, dx dt. Don't forget the dx dt's because they're changing just like their distance is changing. All right, so we found our derivative. Now we're going to simplify this. So the 1 half and then the negative one half on the exponent gives us our fraction, one over two, the square root of my nonsense, my radicand. Everywhere I see a dx dt, I replace it with a two. Two x times two is four x. 
2 times 2x times 2, that's going to be 8x, all multiplied by x squared plus 1. And when I simplify, I'll get 8x cubed. 8x plus times 1 is 8x plus 4x. So I'll have 8x cubed plus 12x. But remember, if I have 8x cubed plus 12x, and the 2 from my denominator, when they all cancel, that becomes a 4, and we have a coefficient of 6 on our x. So the numerator is correct, 4x cubed plus 6x, because I simplified with the 2 in the denominator. So we're asked to find the rate of change of the distance, and what we found is exactly what we have. We have the derivative of distance, the rate of change of the distance, is given by this equation. And this formula, for any x value you give me on this particular parabola, any x value you give me, I could tell you exactly how fast the distance is changing between that x, y value and the origin. So problem's complete. Even if it doesn't look totally satisfactory because we've got a formula instead of a value, but that's the way it goes sometimes. The radius r of a circle is increasing at a rate of 4 centimeters per minute. Find the rates of change of the area when the, uh, r equals 8 centimeters and when r equals 32 centimeters. So the radius of a circle, I know I'm dealing with a circle, and the radius is increasing. I want to find the rate of change of area. So I need to know the area of a circle. That's pi r squared. The rate of change of area, that's the derivative of area. That's dA dt because rate of change is always with respect to time equals, well pi is just a constant, so that's going to stick, stick around. The derivative of r squared is 2r, but don't forget dr dt because r, also a function of time, implicit differentiation, uses the chain rule. So I know that the radius is increasing at 4 centimeters per minute. At 4 centimeters per minute, I'll put in dr dt as 4. For part a, at 8 centimeters, I put in an 8 for my r value, 2 pi times 8 times 4. That's 64 pi centimeters squared per minute. And this is your answer, 64 pi. Do not give me a decimal unless I ask for a decimal to a certain number of decimal places. Otherwise, always give exact answers. The same setup, right? Part B, the only difference is when I substitute my r value, it's going to be 32 centimeters instead of 8. So 2 pi times 32 times 4, now it's 256 pi square centimeters per minute that my area is changing. And the same formulas, the same problem, all I do is just change this one value for part B. So let A be the area of a circle of radius R that's changing with respect to time. If dr dt is constant, will dA dt be constant? Well, we saw in the previous examples that dA dt for the area of any circle is 2 pi r dr dt. When the rate of change of the radius is constant, so when dr dt is constant, we can still get other values for the rate of change of area because dA dt depends on not only the rate of change of the radius, but also the length of the radius itself. So in the last example, notice even though dr dt was 4 centimeters per minute in the, both of the answers for dA dt were uh, different. Of course, both were different. That's a stupid way of saying it, but go with me. The answers were different because they also depended on the radius. Another example, the formula for the volume of a cone. So I'm going to stop here. Oh, thankfully, it gives me the formula. Volume is one third pi r squared h. Okay, so the volume of a cone, I have my formula. What do I want to do? I want to find the rates of change of the volume. So find dv dt. If dr dt is 2 inches per minute and the height is 3 times the radius, when the radius equals 6 inches and when the radius equals 24 inches. Okay, so what is it asking me to do? Find the rates of change of the volume. Tells me I'm going to find dv dt. Let's pretend I can write that. Let's find dv dt. It gives me values, substitute for dr dt, but the problem is I have two variables here. And when I have two variables in a problem, it, it gets a little challenging. 
So when doing related rates problems, always try to eliminate variables if possible. If h equals 3r, I'm going to replace my h in the formula with 3r. 1 third times 3 makes 1 pi r cubed. So now I have my formula of volume in terms of pi r cubed. V equals pi r cubed. I can find dv dt, finding the derivative. 3 pi r squared, right? derivative of r cubed is 3 r squared. Multiplying by dr dt because everything is a function of time. This is implicit differentiation using the chain rule for dr dt. Now I can substitute my values. I know that dr dt is 2. I know that the radius is 6 inches in our first example, so we'll put 6. Square it, get 36. 36 times 2 is 72. 72 times 3 is 216 pi cubic inches per minute. Using the exact same setup, right, same setup, now if r is 24 inches, I'm going to have 3,456 pi cubic inches per minute. So the larger the radius, as long as the volumes, uh, excuse me, as long as the radius is increasing at a steady rate, the larger the radius, of course, the volume is going to uh, increase at a larger rate as well. A construction worker pulls a five meter plank up the side of a building under construction by means of a rope tied to one end of the plank. This is one of those situations where drawing it might be extremely helpful. So, uh, the side of a building, I have a building here, the rope in brown, because most ropes are. I guess not all, but you know, I go with it. A five meter plank. Okay, assume the opposite end of the plank follows a path perpendicular to the wall of the building. So the tail end of the plank is going perpendicular along the ground towards the wall of the building. The worker pulls the rope at a rate of 0.15 meters per second. So I'm going to label my y, my x, let's uh, get a good color here, let me go with green, I'm going to label my y, my x, and my radius is going to be the 5. And it turns into this kind of ugly looking picture over here, a little pixelated, but my y value, my x value, my five meter plank, this is the height that the plank is up the wall. The bottom part is the distance the end of the plank is from the wall. So what do I want to know? I know that he pulls the rope at a rate of 0.15 meters per second. So this rope is going up the wall. So dy dt is 0.15. How fast is the end of the plank sliding along the ground? End of the plank sliding along the ground. So we want to find dx dt when it is 2.5 meters from the wall of the building. Let's check it out. All right, so our first step is to write this relationship. And we know that with a right angle, a right triangle, as long as this building is crafted well, we'll have x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared. And we're going to use this Pythagorean relationship in a couple of ways. The first, we're going to use it to solve uh, for dx dt using implicit differentiation. But then we're going to find we're missing a value. And so we'll come back to this original relationship equation to get one of our values as well. So with x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared, the derivative of x squared is 2x dx dt plus the derivative of y squared is 2y dy dt equals the derivative of 5 squared. Remember, it's 5 squared. It's 25. It could be 795,314. The derivative of any constant is always zero. So I'm going to subtract the 2y dy dt from both sides. When I isolate my dx dt, because I want to know how fast that plank is traveling towards the wall, I'm going to divide by 2x on both sides. My 2's cancel. I have negative y over x dy dt. So fantastic. We know that the rope is being pulled at a certain rate, so we know dy dt. We know the plank is 2.5 meters away from the wall. Fantastic but we don't know our y value, so we can't solve quite yet. This is when we'll go back to the original, x squared plus y squared equals 5. When x is 2.5, I can find my y value. I don't want to substitute this first. I want to have my generic equation so I could find the derivative equation and then use it a second time to find the actual value. 2.5 squared is 6.25 when I subtract from 25. 
my y value is the square root of 18.75. Yes, that is an ugly number, but I'm going to leave it like that because I'm going to put it into another equation and I'll let my calculator simplify it all at once. So what was the question? The worker pulls the rope at a rate of 0.15 meters per second, dy dt. How fast is the end of the plank sliding around the ground, find dx dt, when it is, so when x is 2.5 meters from the wall of the building? Well, I have negative y, so negative square root of 18.75. And when I enter this into my calculator, completely, let the calculator do the work, I end up with a negative 0.26 meters per second for dx dt. Now, negative speed, that's weird, but it's not a speed, it's a rate. The negative sign is going to tell us direction. So the negative says it's going to the left, so it's going towards the wall at 0.26 meters per second. You'll get to see more of my fantastic artistry in this example. A man, six feet tall, walks at a rate of five feet per second away from a light that is 15 feet above the ground. When he is 10 feet from the base of the light, we have two questions. At what rate is the tip of his shadow moving? And at what rate is the length of his shadow moving? Uh, excuse me, changing. So we have a street light. We have a six foot tall guy. He's walking away, his shadow in gray. What do we have? We have 15 feet for the light. We have six feet for the height of the man. Let's make the total distance from the lamp post to the tip of the shadow of the shadow is going to be a distance of y and we're going to call the distance between the lamp and the man the distance x here's our setup how do we solve it with our picture here our our little sketch we have similar triangles so i know 15 is to 6 as y is to this little triangle this little piece here and what is that piece that piece is y minus x so i have one triangle and then I have my big triangle. So my big triangle has a height of 15. My small triangle has a height of six. My big triangle has a base of y. My little triangle has a base of y minus x. When I cross multiply, anytime I have a proportion, I'm gonna cross multiply, set them equal to each other. I'll have 15y minus 15x equals six y. Let's subtract 6y from both sides and add 15x. I get 9y equals 15x. And I can simplify to get y by itself. y equals 15x over 9. And that simplifies to give us y equals a 5x over 3. Now, how does that help? It, it's nice to have y in terms of the si single value x because it gives us a distance here when he's 10 feet from the base of the light. And that's why we chose x to be this distance and not the distance here uh, of the length of the shadow. So the distance he is from the light given to us, we're gonna make that a variable value. How do we deal with this? Let's see. At what rate is the tip of his shadow moving? Well, when y equals five x over three, I know that dx dt is five feet per second and x is 10 feet. So dy dt is equal to five thirds dx dt. Right? If I had 5 thirds x, the derivative is 5 thirds, but since x is a function of time, I'll have a dx dt. So that's 5 thirds times 5, 25 thirds, or 8.33 feet per second if we were rounding to two decimal places. So that's the tip of his shadow. Right? That's the full length y. But what's the length of his shadow? The length of his shadow was y minus x. So I want to find the rate of change of y minus x. That's going to be dy dt minus dx dt. I just found the rate of change of the tip of his shadow minus the rate the guy's walking. The length of his shadow is going to be changing at 3.33 feet per second. So it's going to be getting longer because it's positive and it makes sense. So you walk away from a light source, your shadow gets longer. That's related rates. If you want to see some examples specific to your web assigned homework for my UTEP students, please see the companion video related rates examples on YouTube. Thanks for listening.